life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Please sit as we shall now have the tributes. The first tribute by Sandra Weeks, immediately followed by a violin presentation by Okira Hill. Tribute by Sandra Weeks. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to see so many faces here um, and people, all of you who've come to honor the life of Roland Desmond McCollin, to express our respect and admiration for the man who loved not only his family, but his friends and he respected his co-workers. Look at all of you there. It's so good a show from members from the Drug Services and Collins Limited. So wonderful to see you all, family members. Um, with Uncle Roland's personality type, I am sure that he was fantastic in the department that he worked. I understand that he was the splitting image of his grandfather, Ulrich Weeks, mirroring a similar posture and demeanor, quiet demeanor. Um, he was always well-groomed and clean-shaven, but I have to admit that that mustache that he was sporting today looks very good on him. I almost can see 
a bit of a smile at the corner of his um, upper lip there. And, uh, you know, I, I just smiled right back. <laughs> Jamal, <we're, laughs> yes. Um, my aunt always mentioned how affectionate Uncle Roland was towards his stepmother, Winifred Weeks. Whether she sojourned in Barbados or in the United States, Uncle Roland was sure to pay her a visit. On those occasions when my mother and I would have to go to Collins in the Warrens area, Uncle Roland would always come to the waiting area and greet us with a genuine affection and just that quiet, soft, spoken voice. And he would just place his hand on your shoulder and he would make anyone feel welcome and just bring a smile to my face. And I hope that it showed it just represented great customer service, which all of you there at Collins um, have. And um, Uncle Roland had a familiar saying, an idiom, um, that he would utter as it related to most things. Um, he would say, these things happen. And whatever those things were in the course of conversation with him, um, you get the sense that this was the quality of the man, that what, this is what he lived by. The motto was part of his faith and his outlook. These things mattered. So there was no sense worrying about it. Death is inevitable. I believe Uncle Roland made the effort to achieve what he considered his duty and duty to the world and has earned now his eternal rest. You're gone, but you will not be forgotten, Uncle Roland. And my heartfelt condolences just goes out to Aunt Mary and the extended family, close friends and workmates. Rest easy now, Uncle Roland, until we all meet again. Thank you.
We shall now have the eulogy. Good morning, everyone. Roland was born at Cliff Cottage in the parish of St. John. His early years were spent there, and he later moved to Leinster Road, Waterford, to reside with his aunt, Eula Lee. His mother later emigrated to the United Kingdom. He received his primary education at Erdiston Primary School and secondary education at the Modern High School. He married Mary Nichols, and this relationship remained constant until parted in death. He was the, fa he was the devoted father of Jamal, who I'm sure would recall going to horse racing and other activities with him. He was also the adoring grandfather of Janaya. He delighted in taking his granddaughter shopping, and of course, it was her joy. She could choose anything she wanted and enjoyed the spoiling by her granddad. Roland loved sports and was a keen hockey player. Cricket and horse racing were his delight. He developed into a responsible, though quiet, youngster. He completed his studies and entered the world of work. He had a short stint at the Barbados Telephone Company. From there, he joined the staff of Collins Limited, where he remained until retirement. During those years, he was responsible for the procurement of pharmaceutical items, which he disbursed to various government institutions and private companies. His interaction with the many persons in the medical field helped in his acquiring a vast knowledge of the drugs being disbursed. He was always on call. He was a committed worker going above and beyond the call of duty. When Roland made decisions, very often he stuck to them or was not easily moved. Roland built relationships and was willing to hear you and help you in whatever way he could. Whenever you visited, he wanted you to be refreshed and would invite you to choose from whatever was available. Politics and current affairs would be discussed by him. He liked a good laugh and could always find something to joke about. As his health began to fail, he never complained or murmured about decisions or diagnoses. He welcomed the new year and passed peacefully on the fourth day of January, 2024. The family wishes to thank all those who expressed condolences and offered support during this time of loss. Roland will be fondly remembered by family and friends. Please stand. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our brother, Roland Desmond, for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore, with confidence, pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise him to the perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother, Roland Desmond. 
We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The hymn 549. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days, that we may live as those who believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
please sit for the first Bible reading by Betty Lewis Brown. Good morning to the church. The first lesson is taken from Revelations chapter 21, and we're reading from verse 2 to 7. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of water of life. Those who conquer with inherit, will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and there shall be my children. This is the word of the Lord. We shall remain sitting for the singing of Psalm 121, 121. second Bible reading. The second reading is taken from John chapter 14, verse 1 through 6. Jesus said, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. 
In my father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will give you to myself so that so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going, Thomas said to him. Lord, we do not know where you are going. How are we to know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The word of the Lord. Please stand as we shall sing the hymn 491, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we have gathered this morning to celebrate the life, work, and witness of a Christian gentleman who endeared himself to many, I invite you to open your hearts and your minds to the comfort and, and care of God in this Christian service. I met Roland almost eight years ago, which is a relatively short period of time. But the relationship which we have struck up during that period Seem, seems as if we had known each other for much longer. 
He made me feel quite comfortable and offered fatherly support to me by his kind words, peaceful demeanor, and wise counsel. Like others, some of whom are here, and as you have heard in the eulogy, and those who might be joining online, I too have received his profound and practical advice by simply hearing these things happen. And uh, it came to me at a very crucial time in my own ministry and development. One accepted the situation and moved on, or as I like to think in cricketing terms, one simply took a fresh guard and waited to face the next ball. External factors really can't determine one's destiny if one is self-confident, if one carries a healthy self-esteem, and if one is not concerned about playing to the gallery. One has to know oneself, and by so doing, one can navigate the things that happen in life. Mr. McCollin was a communicant member of St. Michael's Cathedral, one who worshipped at the seven o'clock service. He journeyed from St. Joseph to get to town for the early worship. I met him also in the context when he cared for his late mother, who was homebound. He made provision for her pastoral visits and uh, he took care of her spiritual needs. At her death, he cared for her, taking care of the logistics and making arrangements for her life to be celebrated in this same church and for her body to be interred in the churchyard nearby. He ensured that I was part of all of those experiences. In recent times, he was ministered to at his home in St. Joseph, and he demonstrated a, the similar characteristics as he faced life as a strong man, he faced life with its challenges as his health condition changed. I guess these things do happen. He took life in stride and encouraged others to do the same. Today, therefore, I believe we are here to celebrate a devoted life offered in the service of God, a life which is complete and for all its calmness, cheerfulness, and charity, we indeed can give God thanks. Towards that end, I invite you to reflect with me on the following text, which I think should help us to put Roland's life in spiritual context. I quote from 1st Timothy chapter 6 verse 6. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. Modern life is sometimes driven by materialistic desires. The desires of pleasure, enjoyment, money and material possession sometimes dominate our focus and we can busy ourselves with such pursuits. We 
Where is the spirit of contentment? Perhaps those who have encountered Roland would agree with me that we could sum up his life, work, and witness in that one word, contentment. We know of the phrase, a, a little with content is great gain. It is a variation of the text that I quoted, which is part of a passage in which the writer try to address the challenge of materialistic living while the proclaiming the gospel of Christ. That passage, 1 Timothy 6, 6 to 11, reads as follows. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. For we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierce themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, hope, endurance, gentleness. End of quote. Essentially, we accept that this passage was written by Paul to young Timothy. Some authors argue that perhaps it was written by a disciple of Paul a little later. But whatever the case is, the Christian tradition generally accepts it as Paul's sort of fatherly advice to the young Timothy. And some would see things as having a small amount of something, as long as it is sufficient to satisfy one's need is enough. If one longs for more, it could lead to a dissatisfaction. In the context, the passage, however, addresses those leaders who view the promotion of the gospel as an opportunity for financial gain. The setting really is in verse 5, in which the writer states quite clearly, and I quote, Wrangling among those who are depraved in mind and bereft of the truth, imagining that godliness is a means of gain, end of quote. Godliness. is summed up or seen in contentment, the writer argued. There's a warning against the danger of greed and the love of money. Its counter is godliness described as devotion, piety, or reverence, outwardly directed, visible to the ordinary person, but not a display of oneself. But it comes from deep in the heart because one is in touch with the true and living God and one offers one's life and service to others. The godliness that Paul enjoins here is not just for show. It is piety that wells up from the center of one's inner being. It is a life of contentment that makes the difference. There's a sense of self-sufficiency. The person who possesses contentment can allow things to happen. Because things don't determine who that person is.
Today we might describe such a person as centered or having his or her feet firmly grounded. We may even describe such a person as some person who is spiritual. Not, not to and fro by the features of life. Not disappointed by people, not frustrated by lack of or abundance of. But one who would say, enough is enough, sufficient for each day. We might also describe such a person as not being anxious or driven. And that doesn't mean that the person will not have ambition or is merely prepared to accept the unacceptable or perhaps even to suffer fools gladly. But it means that whatever happens externally to the person does not change the person's demeanor or the person's capacity to respond to the other in the spirit of love and gentleness and consideration. It means that the contented person has an inner sense of security that makes it possible to proceed in life unafraid, knowing some things happen. It also means that the contented person is not likely to throw tantrums nor is the person bad-tempered. The person is able to mix and mingle with people regardless of what happens and regardless of what some may very well have done to the individual. The person who is contented possesses an attitude of restraint as well as the experience of the need of satisfaction. Roland was a contented gentleman who was dedicated to his church, to his family, to his community, and to his work. Where the the recipients of the medication were really the ones who inspired his action, the ones who he paid attention to because their well-being, their health was literally in his hands. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we mourn as very much as we must, a rich pattern of life is complete and for all its cheerfulness we can give God thanks the one who is the creator the redeemer and the sanctifier of such life I believe my life has been enriched having met Roman He displayed that spirit of consideration for others. That compassionate spirit which is able to, to help move beyond self to see the circumstances of others. He displayed that charitable spirit which was able to rest not on the basis of how much he had but more so how much he could provide for others to relieve them of their needs. In the context of this materialistic age, we need people to live in the context of the world with a spirit of contentment. No matter age, class, gender, or any other human or social distinction, if we relate to each other with a contented spirit, 
the quality of our family life, the relationships in the workplace, the community of the church, life in the nation indeed, will be that much stronger and richer. Because we think not of self as the immediate concern, but we see ourselves equal to the other, and the other becomes just as important as self. The life of contentment helps us to live in community with others without in any way feeling that we are lesser than anybody else. To his wife, his offspring, his sibling, other relatives and friends, former work colleagues, I take this opportunity to extend to you sincere condolences. And I do so on behalf of the clergy, parochial church council, and members of the Cathedral Church of St. Michael and All Angels. We appreciated his presence. We miss his presence because of his illness, but distance or illness does not separate one from the love of God or the family of God. Today as we meet and grieve, I pray that that spirit of knowing that we are part of one church which receives us as we are would inspire us to claim the life which is available to us and that we would go, go forward from here thankful for the contented life that Roland live and be ourselves contented individuals wherever we work, live or serve. Again, on behalf of the Cathedral Church and my own family, I take this opportunity to extend to all his wife and all relatives and friends sincere condolences and pray that you be comforted by the life he lived and the example which he certainly set. These things happen. And now to God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, we ascribe as most justly to might, majesty, dominion and power, this day and always. Amen. Let us now stand together and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found on page 5 of your booklet. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died. During the singing of this next hymn, hymn 476, there will be a collection for the upkeep of the church cemetery. Hymn 476, the King of Love, my shepherd is. <laughs> Thank you. 
As we offer our prayers at this time, your response to the petition, Lord, in your mercy, will be hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn, the family of the departed, and we commemorate the departed, Roland Desmond. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father, who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, may we be strengthened in our faith, live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son, and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, show your mercy to the dying, strengthen them with hope, and fill them with the peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, we commend all people to your unfailing love, that in them your will may be fulfilled. And we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our brother Roland Desmond, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that his death may recall to us your victory over death, and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way, and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Let me take this opportunity to extend sincere condolences to you, the relatives and friends of our dear departed brother, and assure you of this church's prayerful support, and pray that you will continue to feel God's love and peace throughout your time of bereavement. Let me also make an apology for the absence of our rector, Father Anthony Herewood, who unfortunately could not be here with us this morning. Please remain standing for the commendation.
To God be the glory, great things he hath done. In 387.
Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the spirit, they may rest from their labors for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow he flees and never stays. Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful savior. Deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. Ensure in certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God, our brother, Roland, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this, our brother Roland, and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May he and all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace.
The hymn, Will Your Anchor Hold in the Storms of Life? And can it be that I should gain?
then the roll is called up yonder. sweet by and by.
I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so Of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. Yeah. It's 
Let us pray. Remember, O Lord, this your servant who has gone before us with a sign of faith and now rests in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, grant to him and to all who rest in Christ refreshment, light, and peace. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. And unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. May he and all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. <laughs>